14, seven years, so many memories. I mean, yeah. it's just like it's an incredible time, the whole thing. Um, but so many crazy things happen on that show and the, the friendships and the people that I got to hang out with. I mean, the going down the hill in a wheelchair. Yeah, my favorite, <laughs> yeah, funny, my favorite episode. Um, that was hysterical. <clears throat> I was just watching the one, um, the fool's gold one, um, where uh, Laura and her little friend, uh, um, Jonah, go out and they think they've found gold. And of course, it's not. It's iron and pirate flags. But they steal my screen door. And um, that was a marvelous episode because I had to be hanging through a hole in the screen door, <laughs> my hair askew in the bow. And we were laughing so hard. And I said to Michael, I said, well, I'm having to sit here while you, while you set the shot and the lighting, just hanging in a door. Why, why didn't you get a dummy for this? And he roared with laughter and said, we did get back <laughs> in the door. <laughs> <laughs> he had a wicked sense of humor. Didn't he? You always say that. Wicked, wicked. And that episode too, the fool's gold one was so fun because um, Laura has the dream where she's insanely rich, just fantastically, incredibly rich. And the Ingalls are all in these beautiful, white, gorgeous, you know, ball gowns and tiaras and outfits. And she comes to and of course now the Olsons are poor. They've bought everything. And I got to wear the poor girl costume, the a tattered little dress all covered in dirt. And I had, had like a, put a wart on my face and all this dirt in my hair. I didn't have to wear the wig. It was my real hair. I mean, they put all sorts of like gel and dirt in it, made it look really terrible. And Melissa was so happy because she normally wore the little poor prairie girl clothes and the one little gingham dress. And here she was in this fantastic white satin and lace ball gown thing, just this huge party dress with tr and diamonds and <laughs> gorgeous he's like i want to wear this all day i'm never taking this off this is the, like the greatest thing ever <laughs> and usually it was all got up in petticoats and i was usually hot and uncomfortable and i had the wig and i spent the whole day in my real hair and a little cotton dress and no stockings and little slippers and i said well this is the best day ever <laughs> i was fine i said i think this is the first time i've been comfortable in several years <laughs> because i think to get your hair in those glorious ringlets that was a wig wasn't it yeah, because they tried yeah. curling my hair for the first few months. If you watch like Country Girls and Town Party, Country Party, you can kind of see it's the bangs start to thin out. The hair, it gets hot and the ringlets get thin. <laughs> it, the humidity in the heat. California gets really hot in the summer and it's humid and the hair just yeah. goes bleh. So yeah. they did this for a couple of months and they said, it's not going to work. And I was sleeping in curlers like a grown up lady. I was 12 years old and I was sleeping in curlers and coming in at four o'clock in the morning to have them do my hair. So this, this, this is, somebody is not going to survive this, the hairdressers or me. So they said, we'll have a wig make. So they had a very, and I mean, it was fancy. It was very expensive. It was very elaborate wig fitted to my head. The hair was matched strand by strand. Color it was a beautiful thing. But to stay on during fights and rolling around the ground, and all the stunts and things like that, a big metal cone goes like right here oh. and then I don't even know how many hairpins they put in that thing it hurt it was tight and it had all these things to hold it on you get it on and I look great but I was like this is really quite painful and I had to have it on for like nine hours day after oh. day and then when you I take it off I'd say your head was tender oh it would come off and the hairdresser would be like ready I mean she'd pull the thing off and I'd Oh, and she, she'd massage my scalp, and I'd be like, oh, oh, I, I could feel the circulation <laughs> rushing back into my head, and it was all, and sometimes, if we'd been very rough that day, and it would get pulled, that big metal comb, you know, would dig in, yeah. and I'd get up and go, oh, man, i go, oh, no, I got cut my head. <laughs> I go, oh, oh, Jesus, well, this is what, this is what you had to but, go through. It, it very, definitely I, made the I don't envy anyone. A bit more, yeah. I watched those movies where people in the 1800s or the 1700s, they're all in the huge outfits. And the oh, big yeah. Cover. I just go, <laughs> I know how much pain they're in. <laughs> like my mother ball. always thought she was a bit of a hairdresser. And I remember I used to get my hair curled when I was younger. She never let my hair grow. My hair was naturally curly. And she used to oh. curl it. My She used to curl it all the time. And I had to sleep most weekends with curlers in my hair. And it was painful. So I feel your pain. <laughs> That's why my regular, you know, what I do now is I generally, my hair is short. I, I, I was growing it out. I had, I, had, I had the pandemic hair where it was growing yes. out, getting it cut. Um, and then it looked really nice because I got this really good hairbrush and this really good spray. And, and people said, everyone's hair looks terrible. How does your hair look good? I went, I bought this fabulous hairbrush online. You blow dry. Um, and then I did a movie. I was able to go to Utah. They, oh, they flew me out. No one sitting next to me. Big mask. 
got tested before I went, tested when I got there, tested two days later, everyone constantly being tested, temperature checked, the cameras way over there, no extraneous people on set. So it was very, yeah. very lots of, and, and they did it. They kept testing. No one got infected. It was incredible. They made this movie and they kept everyone apart, just this group of cast, and it was fantastic. They followed the rules. No one got sick. But I made a movie, and as soon as I got there, they said, oh, well, we're cutting this because the oh. character playing was this manager and she definitely was someone who had really short hair and they cut it they cut it grown this is grown out it was so short in the back oh god so it's like well i won't have to cut my hair till january well, it looks nice now doesn't it we've just okay. come out of a lockdown this is our first day out of a six-week lockdown in dublin really? yeah oh we're about to go in <laughs> you're what you're about to go in are you, are I mean, you? california's a yeah. mess we were almost, you know how like France was doing really well. They opened yes, up this yes. lockdown so hard in April. They looked so hard in France that for a summer they went, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we did it. Maybe we're New Zealand. Maybe we did it. And they said, hey, I think it's going to be okay. And then it all went south again. So now they're like, same thing, California. We started a plateau and they said, okay, it looks like we may have pulled it off. And they said, okay, well, hairdressers and nail parlors, et cetera, yeah. and we open, but like only at partial capacity. You can only have this many people in and of course masks and they must be separated. And they even told the restaurants, okay, if you serve outside and a lot of restaurants had outside dining, it's great. Yeah, same here. And yeah. the, ones, the ones that didn't, you should see the, the, the city let them block off lanes in the street and put the chairs on the sidewalk and even into where traffic would be. They blocked off the right lane and let them put chairs and tables. So they said, great, we'll do outdoor. And it was kind of picking up and things had traffic in the street. And I thought, wow. I, and so I got my nails done, you know, and it was great. We, they had it outdoors and it set out like a field hospital. They were doing nails out in the parking lot. Wow. And so people were doing things outdoors or saying, well, yeah. we let people in and, and mm -hmm. the stores, you know, the circles and the grounds that stand here. And I thought, well, this is good if we stay away from each other and we wear our masks, we wash our hands. Maybe. Yeah. Well, people didn't do it. They didn't behave. They had outdoor dining and they all sat practically on top of each other and people Aww. didn't and they were all idiots and now no more outdoor dining it's pick up and delivery only um places that were allowed to do 60 percent capacity are cut down now to 20 percent capacity wow. and they kind of they closed several places and cut other places down luckily my husband is still considered essential so he's going to work yay and how long so, will they do that for we had six weeks will it will it be six weeks for you guys four they're saying four. Just, and yeah when you come to this, if, unless you have somewhere very important to be yeah. from on at night they don't want you running around um i said nothing's open after 10 anymore anyway um they now came on this morning and said if these hospitalization numbers keep going up they will do a harder lockdown it'll be like april here they said we don't know what we're going to do because they said the hospitals are filling up and they said if someone has a heart attack or needs emergency surgery yeah there's not going to be a bet because it's be crazy it's crazy times it's been a crazy year hasn't it it's awful and and uh we're contemplating we're working out like thanksgiving well we're home anyway for thanksgiving yeah we one normally comes over and what we did is had him pull in the driveway gave him his food he went home and got on zoom because his doctor said he's not allowed to go anywhere he's yeah. so many conditions so he was on zoom but he had his food we sat there and we ate the turkey and talked to him on the thing um it was funny we put the the computer right where he would be sitting the laptop <laughs> It's like he was Aren't we there. so lucky to have Zoom though? Look at this. It's brilliant. I mean, it's so been the best thing We were like more cranberry sauce. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> it was, it um, nearly so, felt normal. It nearly felt normal. Um, it was weird. It was like he was there. It was, it was, uh, we did that. And then Christmas, we went, ah. so we normally go see Bob's relatives. And we said, okay, at the time we said, well, uh, sometime back, okay, it's looking pretty good. We'll buy the tickets because well, we'll do masks and face shields and we'll mask up like hazmat for the yes, flight. Yeah. And, and we also only, the one airline that's still doing it, Delta, where they're not filling the middle seats, they're separating people. Some yeah, of the airlines right. put people on top of each other. We really? said, no, no, no. Still? So we'll, oh my God. By the one that's separating people, we'll do yeah. this. Okay. Um, we have the TSA pre-check, so we'll be in and out of there. Okay. So we said, all right. But I don't know. It's it's getting pretty bad. Well, his whole family all work in hospitals, so they know their place is, is like a lab. And they said, well, once you get here, nobody goes anywhere. We're locked down. We're not going out to the mall or the restaurant or anywhere. Yeah. So we're going to play a lot of board games. We said, mm. okay, so if we can get there safely, yeah. then we stay here. Nobody goes anywhere. Um, so we're like, okay. But I don't know. I mean, if they, if they announce that no one is leaving the state of California tomorrow, then, <laughs> then you know, there you go. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do what we can. Bob goes to work every day. Bob goes to work every day. He's an essential um, worker. 
is he? Because it's construction, it's down at the yeah. airport building yeah. the people mover, and the state of California said, no, we need that. That is infrastructure. Yeah. So they have some people working from home. No one comes into the office from the outside. All the meetings are canceled mm -hmm. that's by Zoom. Yeah. So no one other than this tiny group of people who are in the office are ever there. Yeah. And of course. All men and standing six feet away and it, it gives you time to work on all your stuff i mean your tour you're re, you know you re i i i've listened to you on uh samantha kelly's women inspire network you were the, the oh, last yeah 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 that was a great um event all, all day i listened to it was fantastic i had the replays on all day but that was brilliant um the queen of reinvention you are aren't you the stand-up <laughs> show will you bring it to dublin and let us have a look Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is this? Um, I mean, right now in France, I know the towns that were that were booked for September yeah. October have have said, you know, the minute this is okay, I mean, we we have a stage with your name on it. Please show up. Yeah. So I mean, it's sort of a standing rain check reservation. Um, so uh, I'll be there. I You're will getting be back. closer and closer to Ireland. <laughs> and that, that was the plan. This time I was supposed to be in Ireland. All right. Yeah. I was going to be in France in October. So she said, oh, great. I don't have to fly you from the States. I can fly you from Paris. That's good. And zip me on over. So we will, we will eventually be back there again and we'll do the same thing. But yeah, I'm, I, I must come to Ireland. Well, as I said, only oh, be brilliant. my relatives, yeah. my ancestors are from yeah, there. Yeah, so you were saying. Yeah, that's brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. I look forward to that. The fabulous Alison Arangram, aka Nelly Olson. But um, I'm just on cloud nine. I'm delighted to that Alison came on and had a chat with me. Um, she's fantastic, fantastic character, and I'm. It's lovely to have a chat with her, and I hope I have another one. <laughs>